So, this is the master. I've got a Kenda tire that uh, came off of a new Sherman. Uh, thanks, Lem. Uh, I'm gonna put this on my master today and I'm gonna do it without using um, any wire disconnects. I'm not gonna unplug any batteries or motor cables or anything like that. So let's see how that goes. Let me tell you more about it. Anyway, uh, first thing, batteries and pedals come off. This is a 532nd. Side note, if you are running a massive amount of air pressure inside your shock like I am, uh, you might end up having a little trouble reconnecting uh, these back batteries after the fact because you're kind of like pushing up on this section. Eh, it didn't move that much. There, to make the video better, stopping, starting again when I get all those and the pedals off. Uh, so, I got the screws off for the batteries. One thing everybody does that I don't know why they do it, this, it just pushes against a rod. You only need to take it off a little bit. You don't have to take it all the way out. These are the ones with those little plastic things on the end. Oh, that don't fit. It has a thing on it. Not a thing. And then, once that's done, you can actually get these batteries far enough out of the way. This is back to that uh, little suspension issue I was talking about earlier. And reach. This side has three bolts, and the other side has uh, four. And then you can actually take the uh, wheel away. You do have to loosen, or I don't know, I actually just take them off. These things that uh, retain the thing, the housing for the hall sensor and motor cable. But once that's done, then the wheel can kind of come far enough aside that you can do the whole tire change. Pretty easy. If I was smart, I would have done the other side first so that I could finish this side now. Okay, being lazy, I'm going to go ahead and try. I'm going to take these screws out for the um, motor and hall sensor retaining jazz. Probably not necessary to do, but might as well take this thing out too. That one I just no. That doesn't seem like it should have been so tough, but oh well. And when I get the other side, they should all pop off together and then I'll have the kickstand out of the way, which will be good because I kind of got to fix a little tweak that it got at uh, one bad spot. Okay, other side doing the same sort of thing. Okay, so update. The screws that came out of here that I said, wow, that was tough to get out. Turns out the reason it was tough to get out was because the suspension was pushing it down. This is the little through bolt part that holds the hanger into the right spot onto the stanchion. So um, 
I guess I should have left that where it was because now I'm going to have to let the air out of my shock in order to compress it down and get it all put back together. So, c'est la vie. Oh, but everything else looks like it's about... Oh, I didn't take those out yet. All right, now I've taken the screws off. Um, still don't know if this was a good idea or not to remove. It's not going to be that big a deal, but it was a little um, just annoying to mess with my suspension because I have to loosen bolts to put air in and out, so that will be necessary. Uh, so right now, I have this to the point where I do believe uh, it is now free of everything else, which uh, I slide it over just a bit. It is able to get the tire changed. So, and then assembly will be the reverse of all of the crap I just did. So one other little bit of thing I'll put in here is uh, a lot of people screw up rims by using big giant tire irons to pry the tire off. Uh, they should always come on and off kind of easily. Uh, the reason they don't is because you leave the opposite edge from where you're prying up on the shoulder of the tire. So you hear people talk about the zip tie trick and nobody knows what that means, but all the zip tie thing does is it squishes the tire so that the bead of the tire is towards the middle of the rim. So I just do the same thing kind of a little slower. So I'll first stick the thing that is going to be prying it up and then I'll have some pressure on there. And then as you push in, the whole tire kind of moves to that side. And then you end up with a ton of, of slack on that side to make whatever happen happen, um, which makes it super easy to change a tire. So that was that.